Hi, I'm Charles, and welcome to part 17 of the OpenSCAD video series. In this part, we're going to be talking about the basics of functions. So you might already know what a function is. Uh, you might already know the basics. You might have seen it in math class, or uh, maybe you know some programming already. Um, but essentially what a function is, is it takes an input and gives you back an output. And the output is different than the input. Not necessarily always, but it can be. Um, so uh, let, let's give an example of a basic use of a function. So let's say you have a variable a is equal to 4, b is equal to 10. Now there's the, maybe you have like um, certain things you always do with a and b. So let's say c is equal to a times 6 plus b times 4. So uh, let's echo this. And we can see that this is 64. Now, um, maybe for cases like this where it's a one use, it's not super helpful. But say you had a bunch of different values of a and b. Say you had a nested for loop and you needed to do this for all those values. You could do this. This could be helpful. But another way to do it, uh, and potentially if it was a more complex function, an easier way to do it would be to use a function. So the way to turn this into a function is you say function, and we'll call it our function add. And we need parentheses, and then we have an equal, and then a semicolon. So go back into the parentheses, and we can see we have two variables, things that could change, the b and a, the b variable and the a variable. So we can say parameter 1 and parameter 2. So we know that parameter 1, we want to multiply by 6, and parameter 2, we want to multiply by 4. So we say power 1 times 6 plus parameter 2 times 4. And so this is essentially the same thing. Um, so now we can say d is equal to add. Uh, you need that semicolon as well. d is equal to add. We can even put a and b in here, a and b. So in this case, it's not much of a shorter syn syntax, but if you had a more complicated function, it would be. So uh, let's echo d and see what it turns out to be. And it's 64. It's exactly the same because we have the same function. Um, it's doing the same thing. It's creating the same value. So another thing that func functions can do, um, they don't just return uh, values. A return value is essentially what pops out. In in this case, it's um, an integer or a number. Not necessarily an integer. It's a, a number, a real number. But you can also uh, give that ve vectors or Boolean values or strings. So I'm going to show an example with a vector. So a really common example is uh, Euclidean distance. So the distance of one point to another. Say you have a point in space, and then you have another point in space, and you want to know how far apart they are. Uh, well, there's a function to do that. So let's create a function function. Uh, this part's important. This is just part of the syntax. You have to say function similar to module. So we'll say module function distance. Uh, and now we have point one and point two. And okay, so essentially what we want to do is we want to take the values from the second point and subtract the values from the first point, square each of the terms that we get, and then sum them, and then take the square root of all that. If it sounds complicated, it's really not that complicated, but it can be a little bit uh, cumbersome to write. 
So what we do, uh, remember how we index vectors, because we know that these are going to be vectors. Uh, maybe I wasn't clear on that, but the inputs to the function will be vectors as well. Uh, the output is not going to be a vector, though. The output will be a number. Um, but you can have functions that output vectors or lists. So uh, we say p2, 0, minus p1, 0. And what we want to do is we want to square this. So we want to do this for each value and sum them. So we can just copy and paste. Um, this is to hopefully avoid copy and pasting. And there are methods to do this with um, with for loops if you had higher dimensional um, vectors that you needed the distance between. So we also have to add a sum. And now we um, we can take the square root of all this. So SQRT is for square root and closing parentheses. So this is our function. And if we know a Pythagorean triple, a common Pythagorean triple, because that's essentially what we're doing here, we're using the Pythagorean formula to find the distance between two points, um, we know is three, four, and five. So if we say echo distance and let's make um, v1 is our first vector and v2 is our second vector. So we know 3, 0, 0. And so we have 3, 4, and then the distance between these two points should be 5. So if we put them in to our function, and it will be the third uh, echo statement here, we get 5, which is what we were expecting in the first place. So that's good. Um, also, if they're on the same line, uh, it's just, say, 10. It's just this value minus this value. So it'll be 7. Seven. So now we have a function, and instead of writing all this every time we need uh, this, we just we just use our function that we've created, and it's much easier. It's much quicker, much more compact. Um, it saves us from rewriting a bunch of code. So um, maybe let's do another example uh, with a for loop. And some actual objects. So say i equals negative 360 th by 2, th 360. So I'm just gonna move this microphone. So we translate. Um, some cubes, let's just translate some cubes. And translate in the x direction, i. That should work for us. Okay, so now we have a large line of cubes put together. So now we want to apply some function to this. So, um, let's, let's combine two functions to get some interesting behavior. So our first function will be F1 for function one, and it will take uh, a value, value X, and it will return six times the sine of X plus seven times the cosine of x. And function 
function, our second function, uh, we can also use x as a variable, it doesn't matter. Um, they correspond to whatever's inside their function only, so it's not, doesn't matter as long as it's, I don't declare it uh, globally, it shouldn't matter. Just by globally, I mean if I declare it not inside curly braces or parentheses, just anywhere, then um, this is a value everywhere. Everywhere considers this value the same thing that you've defined in the first place. Anyway, uh, I misspelled function. So let's just say this is um, 10 times sine of x plus x. This should be very fairly familiar, familiar if you've done um, trigonometry or any sort of functions before. Um, so now let's combine them. misspelling this um, combine so again this will take X and we're going to return um, a vector so we're gonna actually we're gonna replace this translate statement or what's inside this the vector inside this translate statement with what comes out of combine so uh, let's see First, we want x to be our first variable. We would just want x to stay because we will want i to stay in the first place. And then we'll want our first function to uh, be in the y position. And we will want our second fun function to be in the z position. So what we can do now is instead of this vector inside translate, we can just do combine i. And that should give us some pretty interesting behavior. And I would say it does. Although it's a little bit um a little bit long. So I'm gonna divide, I'll divide x um by a bunch. Let's say 20. And that gives us something much more manageable. Um, and I will also divide this x by 20, just so it's more compact. And we get so, like this little interesting shape. Um, and by tweaking the values, I could change this to sine, for example. And then it just stays along like that. Uh, I could subtract this. I could add um, I don't even know. I could add x squared. Um, maybe I'll try and keep it small over 100. That's still, it's still way too big. A uh, thousand, 10,000, and then we essentially get the same thing, although there's a little bit more um, leaning to one side now. So you can play with these functions and get a bunch of different values. Uh, OpenASCAD is really interesting to play with um, functions and translation with functions and uh, just moving things around. So those are the basics of of functions. Um, hopefully this was helpful and hopefully you learned something. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.